Hello, everybody. Um, still no new painting videos at the moment. Um, I'm still trying to clear my desk of some commission work and trying to get some other projects just done so I can kind of clear off my desk and clear them out of my head. Um, in the meantime, I decided to go through and clean up and organize a vast number of... Uh, vast section of my miniature collection. They were getting a bit uh, precariously stacked in the closet so I got a bunch of storage bins and I thought I would just do a quick video here going through some of uh, the stuff I have and some of this you may see one day and a lot of it you probably won't but uh, let's take a look. I don't have a huge collection of old miniatures. I do have some items that I've uh, had for decades I have to admit. Um, but there are some interesting pieces in here that uh, a lot of you young whippersnappers probably have never seen. Uh, back when uh, Fossa and Ralph Hartha went under, I collected a bunch of the Ralph Hartha stuff because I knew it was going to go out of print. So I got a couple of their dragons. Durin's Doom here. A lot of the stuff I haven't worked on at all. But this is some old school... Well, it looks like I did something to this. Oh, you know what, I think I bought this used actually. There's some green stuff in there. But uh, this is a huge, heavy, heavy kits. Just take a quick look as we got a lot to go over. I got a lot to show you in this video. This is something I don't know when I'll get to. It's definitely not on the priority list. But I got this heavy sucker. The Conflict. Which is, I think this is one of like the first kits that had uh, plastic or resin pieces in it. And this is a kit that I've kind of played around with on and off for the past couple of years. I glued some pieces together. And it's uh, it's from some artwork. So it's two dragons fighting. Uh, kind of a complicated build, I remember. And you know, you have to attach these two dragons together before you paint them up. But it has these, uh, yeah, the wings are done in resin and they're really bad. I think these originally came out in metal, but the kit was so heavy they redid, redid it in plastic resin. But uh, that's one issue with this kit, is the ugly wings. Again, this one is not, not on the priority list. Here's something that actually I didn't even know I had. I was kind of surprised. And I actually haven't looked inside here, so I don't know oops, the condition of this kit. Oh, good lord, this is a big dragon. Where did I... I, I don't even know where I got this from or when I got it. But a big old uh, Reaper dragon. Wow. This is big. <laughs> anyway, I'll put that off to the side. Let's look at some other stuff here. Oh, I got this one. This one is closer to my... Uh, on my to-do list. I keep pulling this out and wanting to start working on it. The uh, Rob Hartha Fearless Frost Dragon. It's a pretty interesting looking dragon. Ralph Parth is, uh, you know, when they went to Pewter, I forget what they called it, Redillium or something like that. I think it was on the other box. Um, a lot of tin in this. It's very brittle. It was the, the ting ting there. Um, it's kind of interesting, I thought. Beat up box. There he is. Oh, Redillium. There it is. Redillium. So. I'm going to do that really colorful scheme one day. Here's something that's a lot of you probably have never seen. Now, before Games Workshop or before it came up with the Forge World, they did a very few number of resin pieces direct from Games Workshop. And then uh, they were gone and then Forge World created. So it was like the, the preamble of um, Forge World. And I got a few of those pieces. Uh, I got this one. It's Malleus Dark Blade, the Dark Elf. And I actually pulled this out recently because I thought about trying to put them together. And I cannot find his sword. And I'm really pissed off, so I have to make a sword for him. Um, quite disappointed in that. I have no idea where it went. And this is a um, High Elf, I guess. I don't remember. But he has a few... Uh, he, has, he has a sword and a bow option, so there's some options there. So yeah, this is a official GW stuff. I also have a large Goblin Shaman, which is in my case, which is semi-done. Let's see here. How many of you remember Inquisitor? I never played it. Actually, I never built any of the miniatures, but I got a couple of them. This guy, I was 
I had some diorama planned with him. I think there's actually an extra arm in here because I wanted to do two sword arms or two bolter arms. I can't remember which. Um, maybe not. I don't I only see a left arm and a right arm. But I thought I had a spare arm because I wanted there was some conversion I wanted to do. Uh, but that was boy, when did this come out? I have no idea. 15 plus years ago. Ooh, wow, that is yellowed. So that's that's at the bottom of the to-do list. Ah, more Ralph Partha stuff. This is part of the Elmore collection. Ah, so this is based on Elmore artwork. You get this tree, which is hollow in the back, and then the two figures. I don't know if I'll get to this one day. But uh, as I said, when Ralph Partha went under, I was just trying to buy up as many Ralph Partha kits that my local store had. Actually, I think I got this one at convention around that time. Got some. I got a, some confrontation. I got rid of most of my stuff, but I got a few confrontation bits left from uh, when Rackham was around. If you want to learn how to run a company in the gr into the ground overnight, study Rackham because. They could have been big and they blew it. Uh, but I got this cool looking guy just because he looked neat. And uh, I have no idea why I bought these. I must have got them on sale at some point. And uh, this cool guy in a, on a throne. I may have started on this one. I'm not sure. Nope, no I didn't. But Rob Partha did, or excuse me, uh, Rackham did make some really cool looking stuff. That's at the bottom of the list. Um, ah. Limited edition. Well, actually, I don't think it's limited edition, but it's direct only large uh, Sorsha for War Machine. Just a display model. This one I actually got primed. And this is uh, one that's closer to the top of the list of getting done one day. Didn't get the big jack. I should have got the big jack too when I could. Uh, here's something cool. Dragon, for a limited time, made some extremely small 144 scale uh, tank kits. And uh, this one of these I actually started building recently. It's off to the side right now. But uh, 144, 15 millimeter, like Flames of War, that's 1100 scale. This is 144, so it's even smaller than that. Actually, I got a 15 millimeter tank here. This is a Panzer III. And this is a Tiger. This is a small tank. This is a much larger tank. This is like a heavy and a medium or light. I forget, but you can see the size difference. For those of you who think 15 millimeter is uh, too big, you got 144. These are long out of production, but they're pretty cool. They were only like five dollars or something. I don't know if there's a price on any of these, but you get two tanks in each pack. You get photo etch decals. You get rubber tracks. These are pretty neat. Uh, you can still find a lot of these on eBay. Uh, running out of room to put stuff on the side already. Dark Sword miniatures. Haven't even opened this one. More Dark Sword. At least this one's opened. Uh, oh, Thunderbolt miniatures. Swan ship. Tom Meyer is the king of sculpting. Uh, he actually does some of the Dark Sword miniatures as well, but the guy is a god of sculpting, and I love all of his work because it's so amazing, just the work on the chainmail that he does. But he just does beautiful figures, and he's been doing it for, you know, 20-plus years, more than that, I think. But just the detail that he puts into miniatures back then was phenomenal, and still it's... It's incredibly amazing. Check out some of his stuff. I don't know if I have any more in these boxes. But yeah, great stuff and turns into a pretty swan ship. Uh, Random Space Marines. Got some Eldar left over when I had an Eldar army. More Space Marines. And a lot of uh, Soviet infantry for my bolt action, which I hope that I can start playing again because bolt action is a really fun game. It's really cheap to get into, too. 
It's box number one. Box number two, not a lot of interesting stuff in this one, but uh, again, more Ralph Partha stuff. Griffin Chariots. This thing is in mint condition. Um, Ralph Partha definitely was the leader of sculpting back in the day. I mean, the stuff, their stuff still looks fine. Uh, I recently did some old school dragons, some really old, like Grenadier, and uh, I mean, we're talking early 80s stuff, but uh, some of the mid 80s Ralph Partha, I mean, beautiful. And oh, look, this stuff even comes with uh, chains for the reins. Um, I don't think I even want to build this one. It's so nice looking as it is. Don't want to ruin it with paint. And the rest of this box is I got some Eldar left over. Ah, my Blood Bowl team still in the shrink wrap. Got this 15 plus years ago. I'm gonna paint this one of these days. This is on the top of the list. And then, hey, look, Dark Eldar for Dark Elves. Yeah, I still got that to finish up. Uh, I got a one of these boxes I'm not even opening because it's just full of dark Eldar and um, I'll get to this one day I have no idea when but I will start building a dark Eldar army that got pushed off but uh, there's more dark elves I still have to finish for the dark elf project I got some uh, War Games factory miniatures which um, I think I did a video on these didn't I? I, I believe I did uh, dirt cheap miniatures are like a buck a piece, like 19 or $20, and you get 32 miniatures in here. They're really crappy miniatures, and you got to do a lot of work to make them look semi decent, but uh, can't beat the price. And got some more. And we got some Warlord games. Let's take a look at this. I just picked this up recently. Oh, this is sealed. Those of you attending my painting classes, if you're local, will be painting up these guys. Because I picked these up on the cheap, and also they're really good quality. And you got some nice chain mail, and some nice uh, bare chested guys, so a variety of things to paint. And uh, yeah, they're pretty, pretty good. Compared to the War Games Factory, they're a hell of a lot better. And they're only slightly, slightly more expensive. Well, a bit more expensive, $40 for 30 So twice as much, essentially, but uh, I think they're worth it. Alright, box number three. One of these boxes is just filled with a ton of Dark Eldar that I'll get to eventually. Again, I don't know when. Um, I'm just really not looking forward to painting a whole new army. Um, since I already going through painting 15mm uh, Infantry and uh, for US Flames of War and the Dark Elves, the idea of painting a whole bunch of, uh, you know, 100 plus more miniatures for a whole new army is not, does not, the idea does not make me happy. And then I got, oh lord, that's heavy. I got lots of boxes like this where, that are just filled with tons of random items. Um, a whole bag of Bretonians, giant bag of Space Marines, which Games Workshop sent to me for our uh, local painting classes. So thank you, Games Workshop, for that. What do we have here? This is uh, oh, painting class stuff. Does anyone need some uh, Bretonian archers? Got a few hundred. Uh, skinks. A lot of this stuff is actually um, one of the White Dwarfs years and years ago when one of the new fantasy editions was coming out. Uh, they um, were giving these away in the magazine. You got like one of each or something. And uh, they sent a lot to the local stores. And so that's where I got this collection. Uh, here's some really old school stuff. Not painted by me, but uh, Chaos Marines on uh, Steeds of Slanish. And they have boobs, or a single boob. And uh, that's about it. We're getting to the bottom of the barrel here. A lot, this older school stuff was uh, one of my friends gave to me. Um, so I got a lot of very old uh, dark elves that I don't know what I'm going to do with. 
And here's something, haha, here's something you're gonna see one day. I had to pick some of these up. These are the Batman 1960s Adam West TV show Hero Clicks. Um, come on, I had to get them. They're cool. And I'm gonna actually do a video on repainting these to see what, because I'm curious myself what level of detail you can take these crappy pre painted made in China things. What level of detail can you take them to? But uh, I picked up a, a couple of these. Uh -huh, the Joker. So anyway, that's it. Again, um, this is just, you know, well, this is a portion of my collection. I can go on and on for this. I think I'm already on to 10 minutes, so I'm going to stop. But uh, the one thing, I did this for two reasons. First of all, just to put some video up because I haven't done one in a bit. And I'm not going to be able to do one in a while. And two, I just it was kind of interesting as I was going through this whole collection of all these miniatures that I have. Like, each one of them has a story to them. Like, oh, I remember why I bought that. I remember where I bought that. Um, it's a little bit of nostalgia, which, frankly, I was enjoying when I went through organizing all this. And I just thought that was kind of cool. And um, you know what? You probably have your own stories about miniatures, where you picked them up or where you saw your first one. I bought that at my first convention and still in the box or... I remember this out of production miniature. It was my favorite fighter in my role playing campaign, something like that. So, anyway, I did that mainly for me. A few of you might be interested in those stories. A lot of you probably aren't, but there you go. Oh, you know what? I forgot one. All right, we'll close with this. Oh, here's something. I did some freelance work. <laughs> yeah, it's heavy. I did some freelance work for um, Ralph Parth uh, back when Fossa was still around for Vor and Crucible games. Crucible, and good lord, this is this was a never released Growler. Um, I think there's a name on him somewhere. There it is, Razor Fang 2000. I did this, um, and so they were sending me stuff and. Uh, this guy, I don't believe, ever actually got into retail sales until uh, Ralph Hartha kind of reformed or whatever the process was with them. But uh, you can buy this in the direct from them now, but I don't believe it ever saw retail release. But this is a big effing hunk of metal, a giant growler. I mean, the size of those claws. Uh, imagine making something like this nowadays in solid metal. Um, this this is a couple pounds. I mean, this in resin, you know, this is, this would probably be a hundred plus bucks. I think I don't remember what the price was back then, <laughs> considering I didn't pay for it anyway. But uh, yeah, so I got a few unreleased limited edition items here and there. This is one of them. But uh, we'll leave off on that, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Little nostalgia for you, and uh, my closet's organized. Yay.